You started it? All right, I will begin. <laughs> Dear Holy Father, we uh, thank you for this day. Again, Lord, I thank you for these students. I just pray that you'd help us to use this time wisely, Lord, to glorify you in what we do, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, um, let me just uh, point out something here. So last time, I derived a formula for you guys. If we've got a path that goes from, say, um, point P to point Q, right, like that, and if we have that um, x, x of t comma y of t, right, parameterize the curve, from P to Q, right, and um, such that, let's say, X of T naught, Y of T naught equals to P, and X of T1, Y of T1 equals to Q. In other words, I've got a parameterization, so this, this would be time t equals to t naught, and the ending time I'm supposing is time one, all right? Then I worked out last time, the end of class, that the arc length, uh, s, if you want to call it that, is equal to the integral from t zero to t one of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Right. It was by an application of the mean value theorem and reduction to a Riemann integral. This is a pretty standard argument, which is not found in your book. Um, anyway, I'll stop complaining at some point. But uh, if you wanted to break this back to what you saw before, you may or may not have seen this before. Do you guys see arc length for functions before in your calculus sequence? You've seen it. You've seen it in high school or here? High school, okay. In here or high school? I was here. Okay, like Calc 1, 131? Yeah, it, some people, it, 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 it's a hit or miss whether or not we cover that in Calc 1. Um, but to connect, connect with that, if we, have, if we have x equals to t, right, and we have y is equal to f of t, right, then this formula looks like what? This looks like the integral from, you know, say, t naught to t1 of the square root of, well, dt dt squared, right? Plus dy dt squared. And you see what happens for a function. If we have a, you know, a graph, um, then this term just becomes 1, right? And we're left with the integral from, say, t naught to t t1 of the square root of 1 plus, and we might as well call that y prime. We'll find dy, d, dy dt squared. Right? And if you just change the variable from t to x, you can do that because this is just an integration. So, like changing the variable of integration doesn't change the value, right? It's just a dummy variable of integration. This is probably the formula you saw before, although probably used, used a and b for the upper and lower limits, right? But that's somewhat immaterial. So I wanted to actually work an example or two of these for you guys. Um, Example one, I think, is obligatory. Let's calculate the arc length of a circle. So take a circle, and we'll, we'll let it be centered at the origin to keep things from getting weird. I mean, why not? Radius r, what's the, what's the parameterization of a circle uh, counterclockwise oriented center, uh, center at the origin, radius r? What do you got? x equals to what? y equals to what? You guys should be able to tell these, to tell these to me sometime soon because it's definitely on the test. I mean, the yeah. Theta, y plus theta. So you're going to use theta? Sure. All right. 
I'll allow it. I mean, so here you're, you're I'm, I'm going to change the theta to a t sure. just to make it more um, in concert with my other thing. And what should we let t range over? Zero less than equal to pi. Yeah, two pi. What if I say pi over zero? Uh, um, so there you go. That's that's the parameterization of the circle, right? And then, so to calculate the arc length, we would integrate from zero to two pi the square root of what d, um, you know, what's the what's the derivative of x? minus r sine t quantity squared, right? Plus r cosine t quantity squared. So what do we get? Looks like we've got r squared sine squared t plus r squared cosine squared t, right? We can factor out the r squared, right? And so sine squared plus cosine squared we know is it's 1, right? And we should assume, what do you want to assume? We should assume something about r. I didn't say it, but I meant to say it. R is given to be what? Yeah, R is positive. So if R is positive, what's the square root of R squared? Right, so we can pull it out, and we've got R times the integral from 0 to 2 pi dt, which, hopefully not surprising to you, gives us 2 pi R. There you go. So that's why the circumference of a circle is 2 pi R. We have derived it using calculus. Oh. Yeah. Which I, 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 know I personally find to be exciting. So, oh, well, great. Then what's the circumference of an ellipse? I mean, if we can do a circle, maybe we can do an ellipse, right? Let's try it out. Yeah, so what's in it? We'll, we'll, we'll keep it simple. We'll, we'll let the ellipse be centered at the, uh, the origin. So the equation something like x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals to 1, right? To calculate arc length, we have to be able to parameterize the ellipse. That's why the chapter starts with parameterizations, right? To do calculus, you first need to understand the algebra. That's what the parameterization stuff is. So we're going to let x equals to a cosine t, and we're going to let y equals to b sine t, and we're going to let t range from 0 to 2 pi. This is the parameterization of an ellipse, counterclockwise. Will the arc length care if you parameterize clockwise versus counterclockwise? No. <laughs> and so it begins. <laughs> Say that I won't win the lottery without playing today. <laughs> I won't get, ah. Well, I won't get an A in this class, that's true, I'm not taking it, but, um, hey, hey. <laughs> sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, anyway, so, um, another notation, which is nice, is x dot. You're like, thank you, because you just had one notation for x before, so here's, here's competing notations, x dot, x prime, and the most cumbersome, dx dt. These are all notations for the derivative. I personally like x dot, because of my upbringing. And um, that's minus a sine t. And um, y dot is um, b cosine t. So in the dot notation, the arc length is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. I'll write it out symbolically. It's x dot squared plus y dot squared. You see the advantage of the dot over anything else we're doing? Like the prime gets in the way of the square. The dx dt and dy dt, well, they're just a pain to write. But dot, it's right over the center of the symbol. There's no danger of confusion. It's like a lot. It's a nice notation. 
Anyway, notational exuberance aside, this is the square root of, um, oh, 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 yeah, um, yeah. Um, looks like a squared sine squared t, right? Plus b squared cosine squared t dt. Any ideas? You want to change my cosine to a sine? Sure. Let's chase that. Chase that dream. Let's see. 1 minus sine squared t. I'll bite. This is integral from 0 to 2 pi. Square root of a squared minus b squared sine squared t um, plus b squared dt. Let's see here, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals to 1. Let's calculate, calculate the arc length of this one. Arc length will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the square root, square root of, looks like 4, sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t dt. Do you know how to calculate these? I don't think you're going to like the answer. Well, maybe you will. I don't know. The answer is with technology. This is one of those integrals you can't do. And that's why these are called elliptical integrals, because they have to do with an ellipse. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Now, of course, there is one case we can do. We did that one already, right? So let's see here, integrate square root, what, would, what did I just have? I had 4 sine squared t, was it? Plus 9 cosine squared t, is that right? Let's see if Wolfram will, will play along square root of all that. DT. Don't you advertise us, you jerk. Let's see here. What am I complaining about? It was, oh, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> um, so here's one of those times where um, Wolfram Alpha is too smart for its own good. It has told us the very exciting and completely useless fact that this integral is three times the elliptic integral function t at 5 ninths plus a constant. Um, e x m is the elliptic integral of the second kind with parameter m equal to k squared. Yay. Which is a fancy way of saying that these integrals are so special that they have their own function name. Right? Now there's something I forgot though. Maybe this will help us. I think it'll give us a number if I add. From t equals to 0 to t equals to 2 pi, right? Yay. So, yeah, there it is. It's about 15.87. That's the arc length of that ellipse. So some of these, you just have to resort to a numerical method. I mean, that's just the name of the game. Um, so, so it's, you know, some, some prop, like when I teach calculus one and I'm making up differentiation problems, I can just pretty much write down anything, right? What can, you know, can you give me an example of a function that you know the formula of that you can't differentiate? It's kind of hard, unless you're, I mean, I, I can, but <laughs> differentiation, pretty much safe. Anything you, most algebraic things you throw on the board, you can differentiate, right? The curves which you can actually close form calculate arc length for are pretty special. And so if you, um, 
if you copy a problem down wrong from this section in your homework, it comes with a heavy price. <laughs> like you just won't be able to do it. And you got to be careful. Well, I'm not telling you anything terribly surprising, am I? You're like, oh, I thought I would be careless in calculus two today and it'll work out for me. Like, no, no, it never, never really happens. Let me work another one of these for you guys. Try to find one that looks a little different. Um, I'll work number 48, which might be one of your homeworks. If it is, I'm sorry. Well, not really. Section 10.3. This one looks pretty scary. Here we have x equals to inverse sine of t. And we have y is equal to the natural log of the square root of 1 minus t squared. And that is for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1 half. We're supposed to find the arc length of this curve. All right. So how are we going to do this? I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? We just need to do what? So we have to calculate what's, you know, what's, what's x dot, or what's, x, what's dx dt, you know? So what's the derivative of inverse sine t? Do you guys remember? Now we remember that there's no negative because inverse sine is the inverse for sine on the, on the interval from minus pi over 2 pi over 2 where sine is increasing. So the inverse function is also increasing, which means the derivative of inverse sine has to be a positive thing, so plus. And um, that makes sense, though. If we plug in t equals to plus or minus 1, this is approaching infinity, which also makes sense because the inverse function has vertical tangents at the endpoints of its, its applicability, corresponding to the horizontal tangents at the endpoints of the inverse sine, the sign which it's the local inverse for. Lots of things make sense about that. But anyway, that is in fact the derivative. And how about y dot? There is a right way and a wrong way to do this. The right way to do this is that this is d dt of 1 half, um, the natural log of 1 minus t squared. Why is that the right way? There's, yeah, because then we don't have the terrible chain rule followed by the algebra that you guys will mess up, or I'll mess up. It's today. Who knows? But the half then pulls out, and we just get what? Minus 2t divided by 1 minus t squared. Twos cancel. This one's got a minus. But you know that minus, so the, the funny thing here is that minus would not have got you into trouble because we square these. So like that mistake that, that putting that minus there actually would have not changed the answer. I probably wouldn't even notice if I was grading in a hurry. Um, so this is, now that you told me, though, I'm going to be looking for it. But <laughs> not, not really the lesson I'm trying to teach you. Like, talk in class at, at your own risk. Let's see here. It tells, it tells, it shows Cook what to look, look for. What's that? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yes. Okay, so now to calculate the arc length, we need to square these. So what's, and I, I point out, guys, that it's in your best interest to calculate the x dot squared plus y dot squared before you take the square root. Actually, is, it's, a good, it's a good practice to get into with these problems. That way you're not writing integral, 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 integral with every algebra step you make on this, right? I mean, it pays off to simplify this before you go to calculate the integration. So think about what you're going to do. If we simplify that first, then it makes it like easy, life easier. 
So this is 1 over the square root of 1 minus t squared squared plus parentheses minus t over 1 minus t squared squared. Now what's that equal to? Well, the first one is just 1 over 1 minus t squared, right? And the second one is going to give me t squared over 1 minus t squared. And again, if you just go to do the integral and don't do algebra and think before you try to calculate the integral, you're going to be lost. Okay? So you, you want to think about, can I, can I simplify this? Can I, can I do anything to make this better? So you guys think got any, any ideas for me? Factor out 1 over 1 minus t squared. I think that might actually work. Let me try that out. 1 over 1 minus t squared. That was not what I was thinking, but I think that might be a good thought. So 1 plus um, t squared over 1 minus t squared. I take it back. I mean, it's not wrong. Well, I will continue on. So but the point is that you need to do, make this into a 1 minus t squared plus t squared. I mean, you got to make a common denominator, I think, right? So I, I was just, what I was thinking originally was to just do 1 minus t squared plus t squared over 1 minus t squared squared. We'll get to the same, same place, though. All roads should lead to um, 1 over 1 minus t squared squared. And 1 minus t squared squared is amazing because you're feeding that to a square root. We like to take the square root of squares. It's not so bad. So s is the integral uh, from 0 to a half, because they told us that, of the square root of 1 over 1 minus t squared squared dt, right? Which is the integral from 0 to a half of dt over 1 minus t squared. And depending on how much you remember, that's either partial fractions or it's an inverse hyperbolic function. What do you guys remember? Is it partial fractions for us today? No. It's inverse tangent or cosh. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah, formula sheet, cheating. Let's see here. <laughs> I think we do have to do partial fractions. We do, we do have to do partial fractions? Well, the derivative of inverse tangent. Well, Let's look at it a different way. We could use a review of partial fractions, right? No? <laughs> no? That, that seems like a not, not a wise perspective. Here we are a month before the final um, month. I don't know. Yeah. And you got to waste that whole week with your family between now and then, too, you know? <laughs> I know, like, right. You should just stay here and do math. Forget about your family. I mean, unless they're mathematicians. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I'm misbehaving slightly. But not that much. Anyway, so t equals to uh, 1 and t equals to minus 1 are nice, right? Because those show us 1 equals to 2a and 1 equals to um, 2b. So both a, yeah, b, a, and so to be or not to be, no, uh, b is a half. <laughs> See here. 
looks awful. Yes. Anyway, so integral from zero to a half of um, one half of dt. Ah, one half over one over what? One over one minus t plus one over one plus t dt. And that has antiderivative of one half natural log, well, minus one half natural log absolute value of one minus t, um, plus one half natural log absolute value of one plus t. Then I got to take that thing and evaluate from zero to one half. What's that give me? And then when you plug in zero, when you plug in zero, we get log one and log one. Those are both zero. There's no, no contribution there. And um, so this gives me, I mean, I can simplify this, right? This is actually one half times the natural log of three halves, right? Minus the natural log of one half. What's that? That's the natural log of 3 halves divided by 1 half, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, this is 1 half the natural log of 3. In other words, this is the natural log of the square root of 3. That's the end of the road for me, unless I get out a calculator. Natural log of 3 is awful close to 1, though. It's about 1.1, something like that, the answer. So anyway, I thought it would be good to work a couple of these so you saw the details. I could work more, but you really should work them for yourself. Is there any question you guys have about in homework at this point? It's a good time for me to break for my jibber-jabber. Next thing up is polar coordinates, so... I mean, there's some examples in 10.3, uh, which are interesting that I haven't covered. I mean, made 10.2, actually. He's got some stuff on uh, cycloids. Wait a minute. No, that's a section project, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, this, this example 5 in section 10.2 I haven't really covered yet. Um, there's some other things I might do. But you guys have any questions about homework? Um, Ten number sixteen. Is this about conic sections? Like yeah, conic. see I, I if it's about the theorems in ten point one, I, I don't think it's good for us to spend more time on those really. Uh, let me let me look at it and then I'll make a decision there. Um, there's a kind of homework problem I'm kind of fishing for, and I, I know that you're not clairvoyant, so that's I guess your problem. Ten point one what? I, I don't know. I'll note when I see it. Like I said, you got to be clairvoyant. Um, so what what was your question, uh, was Prince? Number 10.1, number 16. Yeah, see that, that's, well, you're, you have a parabola, it's got vertex. Um, minus 2, 1. It's got focus. Um, minus 2, minus 1, right? You're supposed to find the equation of the parabola, I suppose. So if I draw a graph of it, we're given the vertex is at minus 2, 1. 
we're given that the focus is at minus 2, minus 1. Um, that means it opens down, right? And then I would just work backwards from the formulas in the section. I mean, it's not expose that interesting. Um, let's see here. So it's, what's the axis? Which axis do, I mean, once you do that, that shows you which case you're in, right? We've got vertical axis, right? Yes. X subtract H. Right. All right. And the, um, the vertex is H comma K, right? And what do we know about the focus? What is P in here? P is the distance what? Between the vertex and the focus. And between the vertex and the Directrix? Yeah, yeah. Directrix. You're, 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 you're good. So this is P. This distance is P. And then, of course, we know where the directrix is. It's up here, right? Yeah. So the directrix would be up there for what it's worth. Um, so it looks like P is 2, right? So we've got um, x plus 2 quantity squared equal to, could P be negative? I, I don't, it, I have to, you know, that feels right. Um, P is not the distance. P is, P units, directed distance. So he allows P to be negative. When he says directed distance, that means he's thinking P could be positive if it's upward. It's negative if it's downward. So since P is, P is negative 2, according to his nomenclature. And so we got minus 8 y minus 1, which makes sense to me. I mean, y is equal to um, minus 1 over 8 x plus 2 quantity squared. Um, plus 1, I suppose. So that's, that's what I get. But. Anyway, other questions? Preferably about parameterizations, not about conic sections. So. Nothing, nothing wrong with answering. I mean, your question is fine. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm just. 32A might be fun. Uh, sorry. Uh, what section? 10.2 number 32. 10.2 number 32. Let's see here. Um, comparing plane curves. Determine any differences between the curves of the parametric equations. Um, are the graphs the same? Are the orientations the same? Are the curves smooth? So. Particularly part B. Yeah. So the one, one, this, this is actually a good question because it, it partly. Um, is about something I haven't done much on, which is the fact that for a given set of points, you can find different parameterizations, right? There are many paths that cover the same set of points and yet are different paths, different parameterizations. So 32, um, A, I'm guessing that's what's going on here. We have X is equal to 2 cosine theta, Y is equal to 2 sine theta, and um, he doesn't tell us the range. I found that quite irritating. That's um, poor. Let's see here. B, x equals to, we'll use our imagination, 1 over absolute value of t, square root of 4t squared minus 1, and y is equal to 1 over t. C, um, we've got x equals to the square root of t, y equals to the square root of 4 minus t, 
and d, we have x equals to minus the square root of 4 minus e to the 2t, and um, y equals to e to the 2, e to the t, rather. All right? There's a theme. All right, these, these are all parameterizations of the same Cartesian curve. What curve is that? It's easiest to see for the first one, right? It's a circle. You can easily see that this satisfies x squared plus y squared equals to 4. But if you look at, if you look at this, right, and um, let's see here how to do it. What happens if we calculate x squared plus y squared for the second one? We get um, 4t squared minus 1 divided by t squared plus 1 over t squared. Which is what? It's 4t squared over t squared, also known as 4. So for t not equals to 0, that parameterizes the circle as well. All right. To really appreciate the difference between these, what you'd need to do would be to illustrate both of these with like Mathematica or something at the same time and animate them and see how they're different. They would have different speeds. Um, you know, the angular speed of the part A is constant. All right. If you switch out theta for t, it's got what we call in physics 231 omega, it's got omega equal to 1. Um, this one, this one does not have, this one does not have constant speed. All right. In fact, that's something that's missing, um, something that's missing from this chap, this section, this chapter, and I personally really find it objectionable, objectionable from a pedagogical viewpoint, is the concept of speed is sadly missing. I don't think it's in your book. It's not usually in Calculus 2 books for some reason, but speed, what is speed? This is the magnitude of velocity, all right? And I will prove in Calculus 3 carefully that it is nothing more than the derivative of the arc length function with respect to time. What's the arc length function? Arc length function here, pick a base point, say t naught, all right? Integrate to t the square root of dx d tau squared plus dy d tau squared. So this would be the arc length function. Instead of taking a fixed interval you let the, the top interval be variable. This gives us the arc length function. So s is a function of t here, right? What happens when you, um, what happens when you differentiate an integral with a variable bound? FTC1, remember? No. Sometimes I feel alone. Let's see here. Uh, is the integrand? Yeah. You're going to play piano. Let's see here. The SDT is <laughs> I'll behave. Um, yes, it's just the integrand at time t, right? For some reason, this material has been put into calculus three. It's really part of the discussion we're having right now, honestly. So the derivative of the arc length function is what we call speed. This is also the length of the velocity vector. Right? What's the, if, you, if, if you look at the vector v, which has components dx dt, right, and dy dt, that's the velocity vector, right? What's the length of the velocity vector? It's the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So this to me would be a super useful thing to know about because then I could give you a good description of what the difference is between a, b, and c, and d here. 
these are different speed. Like this is constant speed. What's the constant speed here if I use t instead of theta? What's x dot squared plus y dot squared equal to? It's equal to 4. So you take the square root of that. That means that the speed v is actually equal to 2. That's a speed 2. It's just going at the constant rate of 2 meters per second around the circle. Round and round it goes. This, on the other hand, if you were to differentiate it, I have to differentiate it. It's fairly obvious that when you differentiate it, you're not getting constant speed, right? I don't, I don't think either of these. But anyway, all four of these things, if we look at x squared plus y squared, we'll get four. They're different parameterizations of the circle with different speeds. And they might not all be clockwise oriented either. I'm not, I'd have to look at, I'd actually have to think about putting in some points to see what happens there. Um, you know, we could, we could do that without too much work. Do you want to do that? I'm not sure if you have time. But. I, I, I think they want you to look at that, yeah. Oh, we got time. Here, that, that's not a hard thing to do. All you got to do is take two times and hopefully you didn't make them so that you get the same point out of both. You know, if you have two times, you can tell which way it's going. Check it out, right? <laughs> so here, how about t equals to 1? Where'd you go? t equals 1, where are we? I'll do the easy part. 1. Square root of 3. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's right here somewhere, right? And how about t equals to 2? What we get there? 1 half squared, what did you guys tell me? Square root of 15. And then, well, 1 half, right? Um, so, well, it's, it's, it's x equal to a half. This is positive. Excuse me, is this? Um, try to think here. I need to actually draw the circle kind of bigger. So this is 2, right? So this, um, this was t equals to 1. Where is t equals 2? It's, it's at a half. This is at 1, right? So at a half, it's got to be over here. That's where that point has to be. So what's the direction of the parameter? You can tell from that which, what the orientation is, right? Now, I don't need to look at, I don't need to plug in points for the first one. That's a standard example. I already know that this one's counterclockwise oriented. That's what those formulas are. We talked about that before. But this one's non-standard, right? So I actually have to do some, some research, so to speak. But there you go. That's the orientation. This one's actually clockwise oriented. This one, let's put t, x, y. I'll try to do things orderly this time. This time we can use 0 and we can use 1. That's easier. So that gets me 0, 2. I plug in 1, I get 1 root 3, right? So I'm starting time 0 um, at x equals to 0, y equals to 2. Time 1, I'm at 1, 3, I'm over here. So Looks like I'm going this way, right? So again, clockwise oriented, right? Which is the negative orientation as math would have it. And again, you could do the same for D. I won't do it, but do you guys get the idea? Yeah. Now, if someone said, Find the arc length of this curve, right? And suppose that you were given ranges for the parameters such that it would cover all the circle except for a point, probably. I'm not sure these can actually cover the whole circle. In fact, this 
this can only parameterize what part of it? Look at this formula. What, what is this? This is not a parameterization of the whole circle. Yeah, the right side. Very good. Yay. So, yeah, it's just the right side because this is greater than zero, right? Square root, absolute value, that's never negative. That's just the right side of the circle. This one, now that I think about it some more, it's actually just this part, right? No matter what I make t, it can't get beyond that because square roots are not negative. We're stuck in that upper quadrant for those formulas. This one, yeah, the, the other, it's, it's up here. Well, could have, well, no, that's positive, right? This is positive, and this is, 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 is less than or equal to zero, I think, yeah. And then there might be further restrictions if I studied the formulas more carefully, but they're definitely all parts of a circle, and you can figure out the orientation by plugging in points. I hope you see that the larger point here is that we're not trying to remember a set of answers. We are trying to learn how to analyze these things example by example. It's not a point of, I mean, there are some certain examples that we need to learn and remember, like the parameterization of a circle, an ellipse, a hyperbola, how to find a line segment between two points. These are non-negotiables, like you need to have those memorized. I, 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 won't, I won't even play about that. I mean, that, that, that's the truth. But other things, you know, there's just too many, there's too much, there's just a rich plethora of examples. You can't remember the answers to all of them, right? So, all right, so tomorrow, polar coordinates, all right? And how to do calculus with them. <laughs>